Shalom, and welcome to In the Beginning Radio Program. I am Wayne Leland, Rabbi of Am Israel Messianic Synagogue in Navarre, Florida. And Rabbi Eric Tokter of Bridal Messianic Synagogue in Pensacola is at a conference today, and he will be back with us next week. I hope he has a wonderful time. We will have uh, someone here. I have someone here from our congregation, our synagogue, Woody, who will share uh, his testimony and some things about the prison ministry here in a little while. I'd also like to thank Natasha Cross Reynolds for our opening song and Tamara Alexander who wrote and produced it. You can check out their music on www.somplace.com. That is somplace.com. Go there and check out their music. They've got a lot of songs that you can enjoy, very worshipful songs, uh, uh, praising our Creator. Also, I would like to share at this moment some of the local Messianic communities that you can visit in the areas that you're in. One of them is Bridal Messianic Synagogue, and they meet at 6700 Spanish Trail, Pensacola, Florida. Their Sabbath or Shabbat service on Saturday starts at 10 a.m. They also have a Tuesday scripture study that starts at 7 o'clock p.m. First century worship in a 21st century world. You can also look at their website to find out more uh, information about events and things that are taking place there. At ShalomPensacola.com That is ShalomPensacola.com And I'd also uh, like to share with you where our synagogue, our congregation meets. That's Am Israel Messianic Synagogue. We meet at 8177 East Bay Boulevard, also known as Highway 399 in Navarre, Florida. You can reach us directly at 850-293-4721. Also, you can look at our website to see what's going on. Uh, that is ShalomNavar.com. ShalomNavar.com. Uh, our Sabbath service is each Saturday at 1 o'clock p.m. And we also have an Oneg. It's a happy meal at the end of the day that the ladies, the families fix on Friday, the day before, so we can have family time together. Also, we have a Tuesday night Bible study that is interactive. It starts at 7 o'clock. We invite you to come out and be involved in that, as well as our Sabbath service. On Tuesday night, you can raise your hand and be a part, a uh, participant, and asking questions, uh, questions maybe you've always wanted to ask and never given a chance. No questions too hard. You know, if we don't know the answer, we'll just pray about it and ask the Father to show us so we can talk about it next week when you come back. we just love to have you to come and visit with us. Also, if you would like to know what's going on in the Messianic International Community Worldwide, You can go to the Messianic Times. That's the news source that you need to find out everything that's taking place across the world internationally. And that is MessianicTimes.com. That is MessianicTimes.com. Also, Congregation Mayim Kaim, the Eastern Shores Messianic Synagogue. They meet at 10526 County Road 64 in Daphne, Alabama. Their Saturday Sabbath service starts at 10.30 a.m. In the community, and and they also have a community study on Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. So their Sabbath service again is at 10.30 a.m., and they have a community uh, study Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check them out on their website at shalomeasternshore.com. That is shalomeasternshore.com. Also, Bayat Israel, that's South Mobile's Messianic Synagogue. Sabbath service starts on Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m., and they also have a Tuesday Bible study that starts at 7 o'clock p.m. That is 8340-8340 East Rabbi Street in Bio Labatra, Alabama. Also, you can look them up to find out all the things that they're doing, the events that take place, at shalommobile.com. That is shalommobile.com. Okay, folks, we're going to uh, hold the calls today. If you just 
uh, write your questions down and hold them the next week because we're going to uh, I'm going to talk to Brother Woody here, and he's going to share some things with us, and we're going to read some scripture together and share some things. So you can get your pencil, pencils, or pens, and piece of paper out, and we're going to talk about some of the things in the Torah portion that took place the Parsha this week. But first, Brother Woody, I'd like to invite you. How are you doing today? Great. Right. West and highly favored. Now, Brother Woody's been coming to the congregation for a while, him and his wife, Anita, and they've been a blessing. And, and uh, Brother Woody's got quite a testimony. Brother Woody, could you share a little bit how you ended up coming to Am Israel and, and the things that the Father shared? Will you just go ahead and take your time and, and let's listen to what your testimony is? Thank you, Rabbi Wayne. Uh, well, I was a rebellious son of a Southern Baptist preacher uh, most of my life. Up until a few years ago, uh, I was selfish and self-centered, and many times I worked to have a form of godliness, but I never really truly knew the Savior, knew Yeshua, and I was given to drinking and drugs to be at ease with myself and to relieve pain physically, emotionally, and spiritually, you know, to feel good. Uh, I knew the way that was right, and I knew I wasn't doing it. But I'd spent most of my growing up life, you know, being in church and being around people who called themselves Christian. But, you know, as you see, a lot of them were actually emotionally unstable and even lived sinful lives in secret. And I really wanted to be a real person and not a fake pretend person uh, growing up, as I've seen all that. And then, uh, but as a result, Rabbi Wayne, I, I was a man, a husband, and a dad that was usually drunk or high or wishing I was, uh, always emotionally not really a present even. Uh, I drug my family down to many lows and did things that I'm ashamed of against my God, myself, and my family and others. Uh, I'd been able to quit drinking through the help of AA about 11 years ago now, or 12, but there was no real joy in my heart. Uh, even though things you know, could make me happy for a little while, there was always a price to pay, be paid for it, it seemed like, you know, living in the flesh. Uh, well, about three years ago, I was actually uh, watching a video on biblical archaeology. It's, it's kind of neat how the Holy Spirit can use different things for different one of us to meet us where we're at. And that's, that's what he did to me. He met me where I was at. And uh, I became aware, as never before, what Yeshua had actually done for me. I saw myself as a sinner. I saw that I deserved to be punished for repeatedly breaking God's law, for repeatedly breaking His Torah, His instructions that He gave to us to follow. Amen. And uh, especially, uh, I was especially convicted for blasphemy. And I think that's because I knew better for taking His name in vain repeatedly through my life. Uh, I spent a week wrestling with this, kind of like uh, Jacob. I, I, I had my, my Jacob time or wrestling with God there. and uh, But all this time, I, I was still knowing and planning what I needed to do. See, we were going to visit my dad's church the next Sunday. And uh, that was uh, the morning of First Fruits. Uh, call it Easter. But we know it is First Fruits. Amen. Uh, and it was a church my dad was pastoring when he passed away uh, about two years before that. Well, uh, I don't really know what uh, the pastor there at the time preached on that day. It didn't really matter. I was just waiting on the altar call. <laughs> and I took my mother by the hand, and I went down to an old-fashioned altar. And I repented. I repented of my sins. I made a decision right then and there that I was no longer going to do the things that God didn't want me to do. But from that moment on in my life, I was going to do what he wanted me to do. Hallelujah. I repented of blasphemy and all my sins at the, in, that, in that moment. And I felt the tears of my mother running down, falling on my arm. I turned my heart and my will and my life over to Yeshua. And it was like a, you know, people, people talk, they give you a prayer to pray, you know, many times, but uh, Rabbi Wayne, it didn't work that way to me. I was like an unfaithful husband trying to reconcile with my wife when I was there because that's what I'd been. I'd been unfaithful to my Lord. And 
I didn't really need anybody to tell me what to say. I repented. I asked for forgiveness, and I made a decision not to continue to take his name in vain or do the things he didn't want me to do, like I say. Uh, since that moment, the love of the Messiah, his caring for my better good, has flowed into me and through me, and I truly care for the better good of him as my Adonai, my Lord, Master, and my, my Savior, my, my Yeshiva. He is Yeshua. He is Yah's salvation. And I know it. And I have a very, and it's, it's becoming more and more all the time, more intimate together. Yeah. The more that I continue in His Word to truly work to be His disciple, to be disciplined in His ways. And it's just a wonderful experience. It's, it's been such a wonderful journey these last few years. You know, I have the regret that I didn't come to him sooner. We all do when we come to him, but it's so wonderful that I'm, I thank him that he put his finger on me when he did. Uh, I, I can say I care for his better good now, and I care for the better good of those around me. Uh, the Shema, like you and I were talking on the way over yeah. here, that the Shema is a uh, is wonderful gift to us to be able to meditate on that. To know that He is one, He is He caught, He is He is our one Lord and our one Savior, and to love Him with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, with all my resources, and then to love Him, love my neighbors, love every other person on this planet as I love myself. You know, I mean, uh, am I perfect in this? No, uh, I still have struggles today, but Rabbi Wayne, my struggles don't have me. Hallelujah. I'm able to rise above him. Amen. He's given me a joy of knowing my future is with him, a knowledge of that. To know that I'm going to stand on that sea of fire and glass, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are going to be there together. That's awesome. I know. And, you know, and I will escape the wrath to come, you know, and that that is hell, the lake of fire for those that are unrepentant to him. Uh it's, you know, and he's given me a helper, and that is the Rock Hakodesh, our Holy Spirit, and it is he who sanctifies me. And as I work to draw near to him, he works to come closer to me. And it's just been a wonderful journey. Uh, and about four months ago, well, actually, about a year ago, I'd, I'd been going to a, a local uh, Baptist church. And I'd always been drawn to the uh, the Seventh Day Sabbath and interpreting Scripture literally, just, just as He yes. says it is. And I'd always wondered, you know, about the the commandments and why we, on, you know, I'd always had a question on about how to honor the Sabbath. And I began to be convicted of that, and I began to work to try to honor the Sabbath and stay, you know, in, in a, a Baptist church because that's how I was raised. And as things went on, I began to be more and more convicted, and I discovered uh, the feast of, of yod heh vav the not the feast of the Jews so much as his feast, and the things that he means for us to remember, the appointed times. And I began to understand that the first appointed time that he wanted us to be with him and to honor him and to take time for us to put away the things of the world is on the Sabbath day from Amen. Friday night until Saturday night, and uh, I struggled with that. I had a ja I had some Jacob time with that, brother. I had to, I had to wrestle that out, just like a lot of folks do. But uh, like I say, I have the Spirit of Truth in me. Amen. And the Lord just stayed with me, and uh, He He met me where I was at. He convicted me, and the more that I uh, studied the the, the Moedim, the appointed times, the more that I was beginning to see the truth and all, and then. He led me to uh, the synagogue in Navarre where I discovered that uh, y'all you existed. I, I didn't know you even existed there. And he, and he led me to the Am Yisrael. And it was like, it was just so wonderful to be with a group of like minded people. Like I say, we're in agreement, brother. Amen. And it's just so wonderful to be able to do that. And, and the more that we can grow together, the more that you teach me. And, the more that we're growing in this, it's such a blessing. To his, his word is just it's a it's a wonderful experience. You know, that's an awesome testimony. I don't even know that I need to talk about anything else today. Of course, we will. But uh, uh, 
Brother Woody and I have some things in common. He was, uh, like you said, raised in a, a Baptist church. His dad was a Baptist pastor. We love the Baptist people. In fact, we love all the people of God, whether Baptist or Methodist or Episcopalian, whatever whatever names they're going by, it doesn't matter to us. Uh, some people have more truth than others. Some people are in a, a different phase in their walk before the creator of the universe. We know the most important thing in all this is, is what comes first is a, a faith to trust whether we know anything or not in the shed blood, the atoning blood of Messiah for our redemption that leads completely to our salvation. And uh, so, uh, again, we do we do love uh, the fact that the Baptist people, for Woody and myself, and I'm sure others from other denominations, they gave the good news that Yeshua, of course, they call him Jesus in English. We know that uh, in the English translations it's, it's Jesus, but we know he was a Jew from the tribe of Judah, and we know that if he were here today and his mom was with him, she'd be calling him Yeshua. An awesome thing about his name is it means, literally means, salvation. He is our salvation from the Father. And so we're so grateful, uh, Woody and I both, for for what uh, the people uh, and the churches have done. Uh, however, at the same token, what they've given us is an opportunity to see the Messiah, whether we're Jewish or non-Jewish, come to faith in Him. And now we want to do the same thing for them. We want them to understand that, you know, that God didn't do away with anything that He wrote down. He didn't do away with those commandments. That Old Testament is not something that's just old and finished. He's every word that there is in it. Living today in the person of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, He hasn't changed His mind. We've heard preachers talk over the years, and even in the Baptist church many times, they'll, they'll say that they'll quote that scripture from the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, the Renewed Covenant, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he doesn't change his mind. And, you know, that's really a quote, Brother Woody, from the Tanakh, from the what we call the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So we see as we go through the pages, and we're just trying to reveal to folks that we're coming into a time of the end. When the Messiah is getting ready to come back, oh, yes. we're according to Acts three, chapter three. We're at the restoration of all things, and when all these things are being restored, He's going to send forth Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, back for His bride. We're His bride to set up the earthly kingdom, and you know we're accountable, brother Woody, for what we know, what God has taught us through His Word, His Spirit, and for Him that knows to do good and knows it not, to Him it is sin. Once we know and we practice against what we know, it becomes a, a sin for us. It's a dangerous position to be in. But God, in His marvelous, great mercy and grace through the Messiah, who who paid the price with His atoning blood, so that we wouldn't have to be out there sacrificing the animals any longer for the forgiveness of our sins, a temporary covering until He came, His, his come. He came almost 2,000 years ago. Or as Peter would say in his timing, Two days ago. You know, he doesn't count time as we count time. You know, a lot of us think, well, you know, where's the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep? Where's he at? The reality of it is, it's only been two days, according to Peter. He said, a, a day with Adonai the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. And I'm reminded of what the prophet said that uh, two days. Two days that all these things would be happening to us and persecutions and things would be going on. And then after two days, on the third day, he would rise us up again and he would live in our midst. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're entering the third day. We're beginning to enter the third day, the millennial reign, when the Messiah will return and he will fix all the things. We know that all hell is break, going to break loose on this earth. There's going to be a great time of judgment that's fixing to come upon this earth. And if you don't have the testimony that, that Woody has in your heart, perhaps you just went up and repeated a few words and you live like you want to live. You know, every man doing what's right. We are This lesson this week from our Torah portion, we talked about every man doing what's right in his own sight. And the reality of that is, is that's not what God, what is godly living. It's us doing what's right according to the Word of God. Amen. According to the Jewish Messiah, yes. Yeshua, Jesus, the one who came for our redemption. Because he has not changed his mind about anything at all that's going on in our lives. He wants us to keep his commandments. You know, in John, 1 John chapter 3, I think verse 5, he says, This is the love of God. 
He definitively defines what his love is because there is a real confusion today about what the word love is. You know, we have three Hebrew word, uh, excuse me, three Greek words to define love, and and of course we have our English word love. And apparently today, for most people in America and maybe maybe other parts of the world, I can't speak for them. I can speak for us over here. Uh, the word love it can mean anything. A lot of times it means lust. A lot of times it means doing abominable things against the word of God. You know, accepting people in their sin into our congregation somehow is being portrayed with a lot of believers today, a lot of denominations within ecumenism as though that's God's love. Accepting them in their sin and letting them live that way, that's an abomination before the Creator. We are not only a place for the people of God to worship God, but we are a hospital for sinners, but to also speak the word of God so that the Holy Spirit brings conviction of these sins that they've been living in that will bring them, as Brother Woody says, to Shuva to repentance. If you don't repent of your sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's made clear clearly in the New Testament that the fruit of the Spirit and the, and, and the deeds of the flesh, what they are. And those things of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Adulteries, lying, thefts, homosexuality, all these different things, the Bible clearly says shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. There has to be true repentance. I remember I'm 61 years old, and I remember at the Baptist church I was at many, many years ago, here, in, here on the panhandle, out in the country, a lot of the old pastors back then, even the Baptist pastors, let alone the Pentecostal pastors, they they would preach on holiness. They use the Hebrew word for holy is kadosh. A better understanding in the English of that word holy in English would be set apart. We are set apart to live according to God's word, to keep his commandments. In John 3, 5, again, he says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. And a lot of people say, Well, we can't keep those commandments. Nobody can keep those 613 commandments. Well, first of all, <laughs> all 613 is not for everybody. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, some was for the priest. Some was for women. Some was for everybody. Some was for certain types of circumstances. And the reality of this is, is when you share with the, most of our Christian brothers today, you know, I don't understand why 613 is such a problem for you. Did you know there's 1,050 in the New Testament? 1,050. 1,050. And that's a real eye-opener and a shock for most of these folks. And, and then it goes beyond that because the reality of it is, in the rest of that verse of John 3 and 5, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and my commandments are not burdensome. Amen. He says, my yoke is easy, and my burdens light. And that word yoke really is reference to the Torah, the law, we call it in English, the law of God. You know, is his yoke is an easy yoke. His yoke is not the yoke of legalism that the scribes and Pharisees added to it. His yoke is not the yoke of legalism that many of the churches today have added or taken away from the Word of God, which we're warned not to do. His yoke is clearly from Genesis to Revelation, clearly His Word, and it's easy and His burdens light. And you talk about true freedom when you begin to read the pages and you start to see that, hey, I've been taught this and this in the church, or I've been taught this and this in the synagogue. This is clearly legalism. This is man's tradition. You get to shed that. Amen. Oh, true victory comes yes. to you. True deliverance. Yes. True freedom. And, and, and such a personal relationship, because we are the bride of Messiah. Brother Woody said when he was in his life of sin that, he mistreated his family, he mistreated his wife, and but God, when he met the Jewish Messiah, when yeah. he really met him, when he did repentance, it's about repentance and forgiveness. It's about restoration. You know, sometimes within our congregations, people get out of line, and you try to talk to them and say, this is, behavior is not acceptable according to the Word of God. It's, you're not loving your brother as yourself and doing the right things. Mm-hmm. And they have an opportunity to be restored and repent, and if they do not, then we take them through a process, a biblical process, and if they won't repent, you have to ask them to leave. Yeah. And the whole pur- purpose of asking them to leave is to say that it would hopefully bring shame upon them of their sinfulness, yeah. and they repent even in that even in that position, brother. Woody, is hoping they'll come back yeah. and they'll be restored yeah. to their family, the body of Messiah. 
So everything we do, we do in love for restoration. Mm -hmm. The homosexual, the adulterer, the liar, the thief, we want them to come, but we want them to understand that they cannot continue to live that lifestyle. They have to repent of their sins and let God deliver them through Messiah and fill them with His Spirit yeah. and set them into a true freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. I was thinking, Brother Rabbi Wayne, when you were talking about that, the uh, uh, the song, Just As I Am, uh, I've heard it so much in altar calls throughout my life, and He does He does accept us just as he, as we are, but He doesn't mean for us to stay that way. No, he doesn't. Yeah. He, we're we're going to be we're a newborn babe spiritually, just as we are. We're one time a newborn babe physically, and we couldn't walk, we couldn't talk, we couldn't eat. We had to be fed. Our diapers had to be changed. We had to be taught how to walk. This walk in Messiah, we're born in you by the Spirit of God through the shed blood of the, of the Messiah. And now the walk just begins. And how do we learn how to walk? we got to be around those people who are trained in the Word of God, in the Torah, or if you want to use the English term law. However, I like I prefer the, the term that really what Torah really means is the instructions yes, yes. that God gave yeah. to His people, Israel. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. Israel... Israel is all the people of God. Yes. Jew and Gentile worship him, him together. We've yeah. put out terms out there, and we've separated the Jewish people from the uh, synagogue, from the, Christ, uh, from the Christian church. The word church is not even in the Bible. It's added as an English word. What's there is ecclesia in the Greek, and it means the congregation, the assembly, the community of believers. So if you take that everywhere you see church and you see what it really means as the people of God, it's the Jew and Gentile, the people of God who makes up the house of Israel. And the whole rest of the text from Genesis to Revelation clearly shows us that it is the house of Israel, Jew and Gentile worshiping together. But by some of these terminologies that the translators have changed, they've divided up and they've created different entities and put us against one another. Yeah. But the Bible clearly tells us when we look at it in its original writings who we are. There's an identity crisis within the body of Messiah. Yeah. Some, some places, some of the church believes that they have replaced Israel, and they're the new Israel, the ones that do believe in the term Israel. And that's replacement theology, and that's another lie from the devil. God has not changed his mind about his people Israel, again, which is made up of the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the Gentiles who join themselves to them, the strangers, the aliens. And when we understand that, this includes every people, every nation, and every tongue. We're doing in Navar and in our Messianic communities what the political system and and some religious systems are talking only about doing that can never be done outside of the Word of God and the Spirit of God because only the love of God tears down the boundaries of race, color, and all these other things that are out there and brings the people of God together, mm -hmm. worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Now, you know, Brother Woody uh, also, he does a ministry that which we're so glad he's involved in and uh, hoping to be more involved in through the congregation as well as uh, 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 Kairos. And I'm going to let him talk to you about that also in just a moment. But, you know, Brother Woody uh, sent me a, a link over uh, yesterday that I looked at it uh, before Shabbat service and uh, at a prison where there was a, a, a lady that was a warden. And she was leading these uh, these prisoners who had come to faith. It was a choir, uh, right, Brother Woody? Yes, yeah. And they and and what was the song again? Uh, My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Yeah. Such a beautiful, beautiful yeah. song. And they were doing hand signals yeah. to the music of My Redeemer liveth. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you, you could see that these prisoners had really been had repented of their sins, had really been born. You could see the the joy in their face. Mm -hmm. I've been in the jail. I haven't been there near as much as Woody has, but Brother Woody, I've been in there, and you can see the ones who are, have demonic spirits operating in them. Yeah. You can see the ones who are not right with God. And these, these, these people had such a joy. I wish everybody could see this film. It caused me to start weeping. I called Brother Woody. I said, Brother Woody, now, you're going to have to talk to me in my office today. I said, because you can't be sending stuff over and making me cry before <laughs> service starts. You know. But, but the reality is it touched my heart so much. To see what God is doing, and I had a, had an uh, 
had a chance this week to be in the jail a couple of times and some people that's asked to see me over there and I've been ministering to them and been giving them books and discipling them and, and I've seen the change taking place in their lives. What a joy. You know, I was thinking, Brother Woody, that you know, we out here in America that's free. We can do whatever we want. We got so many people claiming to be believers and they're living a life that's a lie. Like you talked about a while ago, they haven't really done real tissue, but it doesn't show out in the fruit. And how the, these people in jail, you know, I don't know what it's going to take for America to return mm-hmm. to God. It, maybe it's going to take an attack, some serious destruction, uh, the economic system to totally fail to where we're like in a prison. Whatever it takes. If it, you know, some of these people have testified to me the best thing that ever happened to me. And some, yeah. some, of the be, some of the most wonderful people in our congregation, a few of them that got put in jail, met the Messiah there, oh, yeah. really got their life changed mm-hmm. and got it back together. Whatever it takes is a song I used to sing. Mm-hmm. Whatever it takes, Lord, to be more like you. And when you sing that song, you better be serious. Because when you sing that song and you pray that prayer, God's yeah. going to do whatever it takes. If it means prison, if it means losing your finances, if it means losing your home or whatever, you know, God will answer that prayer. But that's the prayer we really need to pray. Amen. Whatever it takes to draw us close to Him. Amen. Brother, I'd like for you to share with us what you're doing within the prison ministry, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, Rabbi Wayne, I've had the wonderful privilege. Uh, I was discipled in the prison ministry by a, a great friend, a man with a real servant heart, um, a local uh, pastor. And it's uh, Kairos uh, Emerald Coast Kairos Prison Ministry, and uh, it's a it's a Christian ministry, of course. And uh, the Kairos Volunteers, uh, we we just go into the we're, we're in several prisons here on the Emerald Coast, and we go in and represent the Christian faith and present a Christian perspective, or uh, economical, non denominational. Uh, the Kairos Volunteers come from many Christian denominations but present only the principles that we share in common. Uh, we're lay-led. Uh, the Kairos uh, leadership is drawn from lay persons, although the clergy do play a, a vital role. Uh, it's all volunteer, uh, with probably with at least 20,000 or more volunteers worldwide. It's a worldwide prison ministry, and it's, uh, it administers the incarcerated individuals and their families and those that work with them. Uh, Emerald Coast Kairos is, is a well-organized uh, and it has well-trained volunteer teams of men and women from the communities here in the Panhandle uh, and the, uh, the communities surrounding the institutions. Uh, we present an introductory three-day weekend to the inmates and it's described as a short, co- short course in Christianity. This interdenominational team of volunteers uh, like I say, both clergy and laypersons, we work in cooperation with the chaplains in the prisons uh, who carefully select up to 42 inmate volunteers to attend. And it's a well-organized, and then we have, excuse me, a well-organized uh, follow-up program that's a very vital part of this ministry. Uh, we're known actually among the inmates as those who come back. Uh, we come back on monthly visits after this three-day uh, journey that we take together with the inmates. Mm-hmm who we call our brothers in blue. Okay. And uh, we're, we're all about making, not just only making disciples, which is very important, but we also make disciple makers. We're there to take over these prisons for the kingdom of God. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just a response to Matthew twenty-five thirty-six, where Yeshua said, I was in prison and you visited me. Uh, the mission of Kairos is just to bring Christ's love and forgiveness for all incarcerated individuals and their families and those who work with them and to assist them in the transition of becoming a productive citizen. Uh, there's many ways, if someone listening is interested in uh, in participating in this, uh, you can be a team member. Uh, the team, the Kairos volunteers, we come from all walks and stratus of life. I can say we have some clergy, we have lay led. Uh, we share a desire to follow Christ's admonition, like I said, of Matthew 25:36, where Yeshua said, I was in prison and you visited me. And if you f- do feel God's call to minister to the incarcerated as part of Kairos team, 
you can contact us. I'll give you a number here in a minute that you can give me a call if you'd like. Uh, but even if you're not able to do that, we definitely, please, we covet your prayers. Uh, this is spiritual warfare. Like I say, we're, we're representing the kingdom of God, and uh, we're going many times to the, the, the kingdom of Hasatan to do that. And it's all about taking over territory, and he don't like that. Amen. And, but we do covet your prayers. Uh, all Kairos activities are covered with prayer, and you can be a part of that prayer effort. And if you'd like to contact me, I'll give you that number here in a little bit. And uh, you can also be a support volunteer. Uh, each Kairos retreat weekends has opportunities for outside support, uh, such as uh, uh, you can uh, help to purchase cookies. Uh, we supply cookies to the inmates. And we also write letters of support and uh, things like that. Uh, now, another thing is something that we call green agape. That's one of the names of love you were talking about, like yes, unconditional yeah. love. That's right. And one of the things that we do uh, is necessary and is in all ministries is there is a, a financial need. And uh, to be a ministry financial booster, uh, all Kairos activities are funded by donations. And if you'd like to support the ministry by donation, uh, if you want to just give me a call, and I'm going to give you this number now. It's 850-532-2355 for anyone that would be interested in go ahead, supporting Go ahead and give them that anyway. number one more time in case they didn't have enough of time to write that down, Brother Woody. It's 850-532-2355. Five five. You can eat, that's my personal cell phone, so you can send me a text or a call, either one, whatever you're comfortable with. A lot of people these days would rather text than call. It seems yes, like that's right. Yeah, but uh, it's just been, like I said, it's been a, a wonderful privilege to me. Uh, we're going in uh, this week in a local institution, uh, and we're going to do the uh, journey. And the, it's just, it's so awesome to actually watch the Rock Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit work on these men as they come in uh, Thursday is kind of an introduction day and you get to actually experience the heart of stone change to a heart of flesh Amen. to actually just experience and see God change a man yes and, uh, it's, and we see like I say the, the enemy is against us on this and we run into the adversary from time to time and doing this just like you do in any of God's work but uh, God's in it, and we've seen so many miracles, and we've seen God turn the things that Satan will bring against us to good. Yes. So often, it, it's just it's a wonderful blessing, and to see these men come to faith and repentance in our Messiah, and it, it's it's awesome. I, it's like, I can't say I don't know I can't say enough about it. But I don't know what else to say. Well, you know, as Brother Woody said, that there there are many different congregations uh uh different people from baptist churches to 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 methodists all all across the boundary lines and of course also the messianic movement oh yeah yeah, yeah. Brother Don't Woody's there and, yeah. And, and and some of the rest of us are taking place in this and uh so we're so glad for that as brother woody has a term that, you know we have to agree on the things we agree upon yeah. And let the Father work out the differences of where we're still disagreeing. Amen. Amen. Because he's going to get it all squared away one day anyway. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, you know, Brother Woody, getting back to that film, you know, uh, that, that lady that was there leading that, that was a lady uh, that was a warden of that congregation. I think that was an a institution in Ohio. I looked at it in again. Yeah. But, but anyway, I, I thought, oh, Abba Father, and I could just see her leading that. And it's such joy. And I thought, man, we need more wardens like that. Oh, yeah. We need more wardens. You know, because... Really, they're there. In the, in the reality, the prison system is doing some good things, but there's some things they're not. Some of, some of them aren't doing good. Yeah. And, and you know, that's a place where they can really have a chance because they can't go anywhere to, to really give them the gospel, to see lives really changed so that when they come out, they're no longer rapists if they were rapists before. They're right. no longer thieves if they were thieves before and come out filled with the word of God and the spirit of God with a great testimony to change those who are headed in that direction on the streets because they can reach them better than some of us who have never experienced those kind of behaviors in our lives mm -hmm. so it's very very important oh, yeah. so uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Woody for sharing all this with us and also you know uh, in our congregations and also when we go when I go into minister and begin to 
teach and share things uh, from the Bible with prisoners as well as our congregations. There's books that we... The most important of all, of course, is always the Bible. Amen. It's always the guidebook. From Genesis to Revelation, always, yes. every day. If you're not doing that, then don't read these other books. But these other books are good helps and understanding with you. And I just wanted for the listeners, in case you got a pen and a pencil, to give you three of a number of numerous books that you might want to look on Amazon in order that will help you understand some of the things that's going on out here. Some of the things that's happened uh, with the Jewish people and the church uh, and history and the restoration that's going on right now and just bring a lot of clear understanding to you. Uh, One of the big mistakes that the church has failed in is teaching history. Teaching history. I've, I've heard, I've heard some pastors, wives, and pastors say, "Oh, we don't need that history stuff. We don't need it." No, we do. They don't want you to know it. Mm. You need to know it so you can understand. Yeah. <clears throat> One of them is, uh, if you want to write this down, it's our hands are stained with blood. Our hands are stained with blood by Michael, Doctor Michael Brown. It was afforded by Don Wilkerson. So you might want to uh, think about ordering that. Our Hands Are Stained with Blood Mm -hmm. by Dr. Michael Brown. Also another one that's a real good one that understands that the Father has not done away with his Torah, his law, his instructions for his people Israel. And remember, when we say Israel, we're talking about the whole body of Messiah, Jew and Gentile, worshiping the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob together. Amen. Those are the fathers we're talking about. Amen. 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 And it's called restoration. Restoration. Returning the Torah of God to the disciples of Yeshua, or Jesus. Restoration is the name of it by D. Thomas Lancaster. D. Thomas Lancaster. And another book, it's quite an in-depth book, but it's a really good book. Uh, It's called uh, The Separation of Church and Faith. The separation of church and faith. And before I give the rest of this information, that just that terminology alone, I, it just came to my, my, my spirit and how that today what's happened within the separation within the religious community is how that, you know, the Gentiles who came to faith were grafted into the olive tree. And Paul the apostle, Shaul, Paul the apostle warned them <clears throat> that because of the unbelief of some of the Jews, not all of them, the Hebrew Jewish people, some of them, their their branch was broken off, mm. and and the uncultivated wild olive branch of the Gentiles who believed, who had faith in His shed blood, Yeshua Jesus' shed blood, was grafted into that olive tree. And He said, and He warned him. He said, Now listen, you be careful that you not be arrogant toward those branches that were broken off, because it's not you who supports the olive tree, but it's the olive tree. Who supports you? That's right. The root of the olive tree supports him. And we know who the root is. It's Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. He is the root and the offspring of David. Amen. And so they will warn and say, because if you get arrogant, don't you know that you can be broken off just as you was grafted in? And if they who were broken off because of their unbelief, they, and they believe they can be grafted back in to the natural olive trees that say were the natural branches. So we want to be careful about separating. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of the church has done today. They have broken themselves off from that olive tree. And they have separated themselves from the Jewish Messiah and from the Word of God, mm. His Torah. And, and, and that's unfortunate. So we want yes. to pay attention to this. It's called the separation of church and faith, Copernicus and the Jews. Mm. It's by Daniel Gruber, or Gruber, G-R-U-B-E-R, Daniel Gruber. I would recommend that you take these three books and study these along with your Bible studies. I think it would be a blessing to you. Also, again, I want to remind everyone while we're here that uh, of, of the local Messianic community so that you can visit them. We'd love for you to visit with us. Uh, Britom Messianic Synagogue, 6700 Spanish Trail in Pensacola, Florida. Their Sabbath uh, Saturday Sabbath service starts at 10 a.m. On Tuesday, uh, they have a scripture study at 7 p.m. First century worship in a 21st century world. Also, you can look up their website and find more information at shalompensacola.com. That is shalompensacola.com. Also, uh, our congregation with Brother William and I are at, um, Israel Messianic Synagogue. 
Am Israel Messianic Synagogue. Am in Hebrew and English means people of Israel, Messianic and Messiah. The synagogue word, the Greek synagogue, means the meeting place. This is where the people of Israel, which is really everyone who has come to faith in Messiah. We have the Jewish people and the non-Jewish people worshiping the, uh, the, the God of Abraham and Isaac there through the Jewish Messiah. And the reality of it is it's a beautiful thing because if you come to our congregation, you will see people from every race just yeah. about in our congregation. Great cloud it of witness. Is. Amen. And, and, you know, it reminds me, this week we talked about the the uh, high priest and the dress of the high priest and, of course, the breastplate and the, and the, and the 12 stones representing the, the, the 12 sons of Israel. And there were different colors and how it was a picture of all the people, different colors and tribes that come in and form these 12 tribes, the Jew and the Gentile worshiping together. Yeah. So that's what you will see there. In some, someone may not believe that, so we recommend you come and visit and see for yourself. Amen. And that's Amen. how it'll be. It, we we will. It, you know, Messiah, as I said a while ago, breaks down all the racial boundaries, all the political boundaries, to those who are really practicing the true faith in the Messiah. Yeah. Because we're one people, yeah. serving one God, God, one Spirit, one faith, one truth. One word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. <clears throat> you can also visit us on our website at shalomnavar.com. We also have a Saturday Sabbath service that starts each Saturday at 1 o'clock p.m. We also have a Tuesday night interactive Bible study mm-hmm. that starts at 7 o'clock p.m. And you can come and you can ask your questions. Uh, we're going to finish up the book of Zechariah this week. We go, oh, man, we great. just try to get, don't we, Brother Wood? We go through yeah. all the New Testament books. We, uh, we go through prophetic books. We, get, mm-hmm. we go through all these books. We just have a wonderful time. Very enriching. Hey, thank you. Also, I want to remind you, if you want to know what's going on uh, in the Messianic community worldwide, the Messianic International Movement, go to the Messianic Times. You can go to that on MessianicTimes.com. That's MessianicTimes.com. Also, Congregation Mayim Kaim. Mayim Kaim, the Eastern Shores Messianic Synagogue. They meet at 10526. That's 10526 County Road 64 in Daphne, Alabama. Their Sabbath Saturday service starts at 1030 a.m., and they also have a community study on Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Also, you can go to their website, shalomeasternshore.com, shalomeasternshore.com. Also, Bayat Israel, South Mobile's Messianic Synagogue, their Saturday Sabbath service starts at 11 a.m., 11 a.m. on, and they also have a Tuesday Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. They meet at 8340 East Rabbi Street, Bio Labatre, Alabama. You can also miss, visit their website for more information at shalommobile.com, shalommobile.com. Now, I realize we're kind of getting down on our time, but uh, we'll just share a little bit here. Our, 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 our Parsha, we, we, we have what we call Parshas or portions. We actually go through the whole first five books called the Torah, the, uh, the English term is law, unfortunately. It means the instructions that God gave for his people Israel. Jew and Gentile worshiping together the one true God. We go through that in a cycle every year. We, 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 we start all over again because the word of God is never ending. He knows that we, as a people, have been stiff-necked. And we need to hear his word over and over again until we get it in our spirit. That we're mm-hmm. living it and walking it out. It becomes uh, who we are. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a Sabbath service on, on on Saturday. It's not just a Sunday service on Sunday. It's who we are in Messiah. Yeah. The Bride of Messiah, the army of the Most High God. While we're the Bride of Messiah, we're also the army. And we're in spiritual warfare, as Brother Woody said. Amen. We're in spiritual warfare out here in our community. We're in spiritual warfare out here in the prisons. We're in spiritual warfare uh, within the political surroundings, within mm-hmm. the schools, because the enemy is got major ground that has been taken in America because the people of God have stood by and done very little. It's time for us to get serious about our walk with Messiah, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to save our children and see our communities changed for the glory of God. Amen. Repentance anyway, is our hope. Yes. So, so anyway, uh, we, we did talk about uh, the Mishkan, or the, 
the tabernacle in the wilderness and the, and the, and, and the implements uh, the, that was inside the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and how it was built, how it was put together, and how that the Bible says Moses did everything that God commanded him. And he commanded the people, and they did everything according to what Moses said, which is what God said. And they completed that tabernacle. And I related to that. To, well, a lot of people say, well, what does that Old Testament Mishkan have to do with us today? It has everything to do with us today. Mm-hmm. And this is the problem with being taught that it's not important because all those pieces that, that put together that structure of that tabernacle. And the interesting thing is when it was all built, it was all put together, it was... What was done first was the was the uh, of course the most important thing was the Ark of the Covenant we call it yeah okay the Ark of the Covenant and then there was the menorah in there and there was there was the altar of incense and the altar of incense is what today is our prayers going up as incense the New Testament mm-hmm. teaches us the menorah the light the oil the ruach hakodesh the light of the world you know there's so much that we're not going to have the time to go into today but how does that relate to us and all the other furnishings within a tabernacle how it was in perfect order god is a god of order yeah amen. so many today want to go off and do it this way and do their own thing just just think they can come to god any way we can only come to god in his perfect order there's only one way and that's through the jewish messiah through his atoning blood that we can only enter into the most set apart place, the Holy of Holies, through the blood of the Lamb. If you try to come up, the Bible says, any other way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. You cannot come up any other way. And in reality, the day is all these little things, you know, we, we read over in the New Testament how that, that some of us within the body, we're eyes, some, are, some of us are hands, some are feet, some are ears. And I cannot say to the ear, I have no need of you. You know, when we relate that spiritual understanding of the kingdom of God, the body of Messiah today, to our natural bodies, we have eyes in our body. We have hands and toes and fingers. And You know, if you think that that little pinky finger is not important, just hit the little end of it with a hammer and see if it gets in severe pain and how it makes your whole body feel bad. When someone cries... Within the body, we're to cry with them. When someone's happy, we're to be happy with them. We need to understand that every little person, every person within a member of of the household of faith of God is important. No matter what their calling is, no matter what their gift is, we all need every member. When one member is not there, it affects the rest of the body. And and that's the love that we should have for one another, to hold each other up. during Caring for the better good of one another. Yes, amen. So, So you see... Here we have this this picture, and I want to just share, because we're, we are running out of time, a few things about this temple of God. Uh, uh, you know, it's interesting because this, uh, if you want to write this down, like, for those who are listening, 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, and uh, we're going to read a few verses here. I'm going to start with verse 4. And coming to him as to a living stone, Rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. That's talking about us who have come to covenant relationship, Brother Woody and Messiah. We're living stones yeah. being built up a spiritual house for a holy, a set apart, a kadosh priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Yeshua the Messiah. And what are these spiritual sacrifices? The praise of the lips when we meet the needs of the orphan and the widows. All these things that we're doing are spiritual sacrifices to the kingdom of God today because Yeshua became the final sacrifice, no longer cutting up the blood of bulls and goats and all for forgiveness of sins and, and those types of things. We're doing it now through the works of the Torah that we do ourselves within the body of Messiah. So it says that uh, uh, these are acceptable to God through Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. And then and then uh, verse 9 and 10 it says, But you, talking to you and I who have come to faith, if you haven't accepted the Messiah, it's not for you yet. What's for you is for you to accept him so that you can be a part of that. And if you don't know him, today is the day of salvation for you. You can know him today. Yes. Before we even re- in this radio program, you can go before the Father wherever you're at. Yes. If you're in your car, you're at home, wherever, and you can repent, as Brother yes. Woody said. Turn your heart to him. Yes. Ask him into your life. Let him. You know. Yeah. It's no special words. It's just you and him. He's waiting to hear your voice. Yeah. He said, "If you'll return to me, I'll return to you." He's waiting for you. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation. I don't think most of us understand the implication of this. Who we are as the body of Messiah, irregardless of whether we call ourselves uh, a, a Messianic believer, a Jewish believer, a Baptist, a Methodist. If we're truly born again, if we're truly accepting the Messiah, we lay all the other stuff aside and realize that we are the chosen race. You know who the chosen race is? Everybody who's accepted the Messiah. Mm-hmm. You know who the priesthood today is, the Melchizedek priesthood, renewed in Messiah's blood, sacrifices, atonement? The Aaronic priesthood. He is our high priest today, seated at the right hand. And we are a priesthood, a holy nation. What's a holy nation? God's people, a nation worldwide, wherever we're at, we're that nation that he's building, getting us ready for the return of the Messiah. When he takes us, his bride, his holy nation, his priesthood, his chosen people, and, he, and we're, the Bible says when that great shofar sounds, we're going to go to meet him in the air. The, those in the grave are going to be raised up first, and the rest of us are going to gather, and we're going to the greatest party, wedding banquet you've ever seen in your life. And he's going to set up his earthly kingdom. Okay. He's going to meet with his bride. And we're going to be here for those who survive this thing called the Great Tribulation, the Holocaust, where we know literally millions, maybe billions of people are going to die. Yeah. Those who survive, we're going to be those who bring forth the Torah, the Word of God, to those people who survive. Hallelujah. And Messiah is going to rule and reign from Mount Zion. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're that people. God's own possession, it says, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who brought you who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you were once not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now, as we're getting ready to run out of time, let's, let's just do something real quick. Let's go over to Exodus 19 for the listeners. Write this down, Exodus 19. We want to find out where Peter got this from. What caused him to say this? What is he talking about? And I wish I had more time so I could get more detail with you on it, but we're about to run out of time. So Exodus chapter 19 is where Peter quoted this from. As almost all the quotes, almost all the things that are said in the New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, uh-huh. today are quotes from the Tanakh, the Old Testament, yeah. about 80% or so, and, and, the, and, and the rest of it, it just proves from that that Yeshua, Jesus, he is that Messiah. He Amen. fulfilled to be that Messiah, everything that was there. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. He says, Now then, talking to the house of Israel, the people he brought out of the wilderness, out, out of bondage and spiritual bondage from Egypt. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice, we must obey him and keep his covenant. The same covenant today that we have only made on better promises, not the blood of bulls and goats, but the blood of Messiah. He has not changed his mind. Will keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. He just got through saying, you'll be my own possession. And this is what he said in verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words you shall speak to the sons of Israel. That he wanted them to be a priesthood, a holy nation. And what happened, uh, just quickly in a couple of minutes, is that it appears as that didn't happen, right? It appears that only the Levites... So it wasn't fully fulfilled in realizing it. And why did that happen? Because of the golden calf incident yeah. of their rebellion. He set the Levites up and that priesthood until Messiah came. Messiah came and became that perfect sacrifice. He was able to, when we repent and come to him, we repent of our sins. He puts his spirit in us, empowers mm-hmm. us, and we become that priesthood, Amen. that holy nation, that set apart people to go forth until he returns to win a lost and dying world to the Messiah. Isn't that beautiful? You see, so it's been realized, the completion through our Messiah and in us. That's why, folks, we have a very important job to do. We have a job to do to reach a lost and dying world. That's right. We have a job to raise our children up.